Welcome back everybody, Steve here, KM9G, and we are continuing the QCX Mini build. I have the 20 meter version if you're following along at home. If you've got one of the lower bands or higher bands, the project's not that much different, maybe a few less or a few more things you need to do, but overall it goes like this. So today, today, yeah, today, we're doing the trimmer resistors and capacitors, we've got some electrolytics, We've got uh, pin headers and we're putting the finals on. So stick around for that one. Okay, next up is diode D33. Let's see if we can find it in the, uh, in the parts bin. There it is. And it is a 1N5819. And you should be able to read that on the diode. It's upside down. 1N581 something. But it appears to be the only diode. Okay, and then where does it go? It goes by the power connector because this is the power D33. This is the diode that protects you from plugging your power in backwards. And this one goes in vertically, uh, which is not normal, but not wrong. It's just not normal. And you want the white stripe on the diode to be at the top. And you want to fold this over and down so that it can be installed thusly. like that. Twenty megahertz clock crystal. This is what a clock crystal looks like. There are a couple of them in there, but it will have 20 written on it. This one says 27. That's not it. This one says 20.00 or CE 20.00 depending on what your kit has in it. And it goes up here. And I try and hold that as flat to the board as possible and then bend the legs over nice and tight to hold it in place nice and tight because I want it pretty like. I want to be proud of my work, you know? Okay, next up is the 27 megahertz crystal. I actually have the transistor controlled oscillator kit separately somewhere around here and I will be using that instead. So this crystal is not for me. Okay, so the transistor controlled oscillator comes in another separate little bag and it has written on its label QCX TCXO and it's a little teeny tiny circuit board and it goes in place of the crystal right there like so. Remember all those solder legs that I've been telling you to keep all along? This is why you keep them. So what we need to do is plug in three, one there and two there to make that circuit complete. And I have a collection of solder leg cutoffs and other little tiny parts. And so I need to reach in here and grab three very handsome suspects. Two, three. Then we can put the magnet wire back. And there's other useful things in here, but so far that's my collection of cast-offs. And so what you want to do is put one in there and there's probably no real easy way to do this so I'm gonna do the solder blob on the soldering iron trick. So I'm gonna get a little bit of solder on the soldering iron and I'm gonna hold that and it's gonna conduct heat into my hand so that's gonna be fun just want to get it held in place. There's one. Ah, oh, that's hot. Okay, that works. 
All right, so I've got kind of an ugly mess on the bottom. No real good way to see that with the lighting. And I've got an ugly mess on the top. And that's okay. So now we need to thread all three of those through. And then just push that down until it is flat and flush on the board. Done, 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 okay? And now that that's done, I'm gonna flush cut the back side and flush cut the front side. And then I will touch up these joints on the back. Not too shabby. Okay, now it is up to us to put on some trimmer resistors. And I am looking for the one marked 501 out of this set here. Five oh three, five oh one, five oh three, and he tells you when you're building this that the case is very tight tolerance and it will be hard to put components in. So what he wants you to do is trim off these little ears here on the bottom of this package because that's how tight this is. There's one. Wear your safety glasses so you don't shoot yourself in the eye. And there's two, that one went up but did not come down. And on the silk screen, there is a little circle. And if it weren't for the through hole pad of the circuit board, you would think that it was a screw. And that's done on purpose so that you know which way to put this trimmer resistor in so that it will trim a resistor. And he also says to make sure that you get it as flush as you can. And for me, the TCXO is just a hair in the way. And so I gotta do just a little extra fiddly adjustment type work. It's flush on that side, not flush on that side. So I'm gonna trim just a little bit more. And that looks good, that is a tight fit. I'm going to do the same solder blob technique. There are small components everywhere in this spot, so I'm going to do the middle one. And I'm inspecting this that I did before, and I want to make sure that that is not connected. And to be extra careful that it's not connected. All right, that's good. And just as you would have thought, it is the next two trimmer resistors that need to go on, and they need to be prepared in the same way. Take care not to cut the, the leg off like I almost just did. Okay, and that one's not going anywhere, and it's nice and flush, so I'm just going to solder it as is. And that middle one is so tight that I want to cut the extra legs off and then finish the job. Okay. We got those three on, nice and flush with the board. Looking good. Next, 470 microfarad capacitors. There's one, and there's two. And these ones are polarized, so they can only go in one way. And it is written on the side. The white stripe has a negative symbol on it. So that means that that's the negative, which is also the short leg and the circuit board has the positive on it. So that's how that goes. Put that in, get it all flush. And C24 is over here, same thing. It has a negative stripe on it and there is a positive marking on the board. Long leg goes in the positive side. Negative leg, short leg goes in the negative side. Make sure it's flush with the board. Bend the legs out, solder it home.
All right, next. All right, trimmer capacitor in C1. All right, trimmer capacitor C1. It only really fits in one way, and there's a diagram on the silk screen just like there was with the trimmer resistors. And I'm going to bend these pins a bit so that it holds itself in place. Check my work, looks good. And then he was worried about these guys touching the case. So I'm going to clip them. Perfect. Okay, so now we come down to transistor time and there are three of one kind and one of another. So I'm gonna get all the transistors out because they're all gonna look the same. And then we're gonna figure out which one is which. And whenever you hear somebody talk about, I burnt out the finals on my radio, this is what they're talking about. They go in Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q6. And Q6 is the odd man out. And let's see what we have. All right, well that one's different. Same, same. Okay, so those three are the same and this one's different and the different one goes in Q6. The transistor has a flat side on the bottom and a rounded side on the top and that's how you can tell which way it goes in. In this case, the flat side goes down towards the circuit board. And so we put these three in there and then we want to bend it over so that it is flat with the board, but not covering the hole, because we'll need that hole for something else later. And since we're always worried about heat on transistors, let's try and be a little quick on the soldering action. And let it cool for a little bit. Hit up that last leg and then I'm going to check my work and that looks good. Cut those legs off. And there you go. All right, next up, I bet you, is going to be the other three transistors. Okay, so the other three transistors go in in the same fashion, just in different locations. I'm going to pick Q3 next because I did, not for any other reason. Looks good. Cut its legs off. All right, now we get to get mechanical. So it says you may have more than one screw. So there's a screw and a washer and a nut. And the only other screws I have are plastic and will not do the job. Okay, so the screw goes through the bottom of the board. And this is a heat sink to help dissipate heat. And the object is to get this tight, but not to kill anything. I used my fingernail to hold it in place. And that way if I got too tight, my fingernail would move out of the way. Two by three programming header goes up here. And now the board's got sufficient parts on it that this might be able to be held in nicely by gravity. If I can get it to stay in long enough to get touched by the mat. So, we solder one pin in, then we check, and it looks good. So now we solder in the opposite corner. All right, next is two by five LCD header. We have a two by four, and we have a two by five, and that goes in the spot marked LCD.
All right, next up is the 2x4 UI header. And this one goes right in the middle. And what I do for something like this is I use some masking tape to hold it in place. Or there's other stuff you can use that's called blue tack or glue tack. I don't have any of that, so I don't use it. I might get some after this roll of masking tape disappears. Don't know. It's a little canted off to the side. And so what you can do with that is just come back and get some heat into the solder. And that's better. All right, that was pretty painless, wasn't it? So we've got a couple more things that we need to do to put this thing together, but we did get all of those parts on the trimmer resistors and capacitors, the electrolytic capacitors, the pin headers, and the finals. So that was great. If you like watching this uh, build project go along, if you're on the edge of your seat on pins and needles hoping that I will get this thing finished and let the smoke out, or not, I know which team you're on, um, be sure to subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, to get a notification when the next video in this series comes out, there is a uh, link up above to the playlist and a link in the description down below to the playlist as well. So you can also see where we came from to get here today. And uh, be sure to ring, ring. Be sure to hit the thumbs up or the thumbs down button if you think I'm going to let the smoke out or it's going to work perfectly flawlessly at the first turn on. Thanks for being awesome.